You can't push a rope. Folks, if you're a leader in the business, you're out front, you can pull your team with you on that rope. You cannot stand behind your team and push a rope. It does not work. How old are you going to be before you start to experience life like you want it? I want to tell you right now, whether you like it or not, there is a better way to do business. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Business for Builders podcast. My name is Max. I am your host. I'm the CEO here at Smith & Sons Canada, and I'm the ambitious founder of Elite Business Advisory, uh, business coaching for contractors. Great to have you with us. Um, I appreciate if you have been around for the longest time. Uh, it's great that you're hanging in there. I get a lot of feedback from you guys and gals. I really appreciate that. But if you're a first time listener or viewer, just checking us out, it's great to have you along as well. Hopefully I can uh, over deliver uh, on some steak and potatoes and things that you can tuck under your arm and take away and implement in your business straight away. Uh, that would be the goal. Uh, don't forget uh, Business for Builders VIP, get across there, answer the questions. And if you're a good sort, I'll let you in. And uh, it's a great place for some, uh, it's a great community where there's camaraderie and there's a lot of questions flying around at the moment. And it's a great place where, uh, you know, it's it's an environment where there can be questions asked without any judgment. Um, I obviously curate or monitor that, the activity there. So if you've got questions, odds on is there someone else there who has got the same question. So um, let's, uh, you know, let's, let's work together and try and reduce the failure rate in the uh, building and contracting world because it is fairly significant. Uh, don't forget, like and subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me, uh, max at elitebusinessadvisory.com is uh, the best email to get me on. And if you're interested in chatting with me quickly about, you know, coaching perhaps, or, you know, you want to just connect and uh, just talk about, you know, what, what happens in that regard, then uh, get across to elitebusinessadvisory.com, hit the book of consultation and sit with me and I will uh, deliver as much value in and around your business as I can. All right, let's get on with it. Uh, right, this month, uh, we had a great month last month. Uh, obviously, it was our 200th episode. I hope you enjoyed the time that I spent with uh, Coach Mac, uh, my friend, uh, who's a retired Navy SEAL and still works in and around uh, you know, helping candidates who want to uh, get into that vocation as a Navy SEAL. And, uh, you know, that was a really, a really good time where we doubled down on, uh, you know, a lot of that, you know, the personal qualities. And I kind of felt that I want to follow up in, in the month of September and really make it a mindset month. Uh, I think that, you know, for us, we've got to get our heads in the right spot. And uh, if we do do that, we are a better than average chance of succeeding because I know this, that success is an inside job. Uh, it isn't something that you can checklist, that you can KPI, that you can SOP. Um, they are definitely, I think they are attributes or characteristics of someone that does have their head in the right space. And I think, you know, what was in, what was probably the biggest takeaway out of that is that we don't speak the language of our business in two years' time from now. We need to learn and develop. And so, you know, I think there's there was just so much... There's a mountain of information that I was considering, um, you know, after that interview, particularly because it was such a great milestone, um, and it was really a good time where we could chat about, you know, those characteristics that Navy SEALs uh, need to adopt, and uh, we we really did draw down on some um, some of those and how they were relevant to us builders and general contractors. All right, so today I want to talk about togetherness and toughness, right, um, and that it is a battle, and so you know, really what we want to talk about is what does it take to succeed in our line of work? Um, you know, obviously it, it is a battle. It's like every day is a battle. Even for me, you know, um, currently having just kicked off Smith & Sons Coldstream and I'm working, you know, project management and sales as well as general management while while my business partner is going to handle all of the on-site stuff, you know, I've got six or seven, you know, opportunities in the fire and they're just not, you know... <laughs> It's like, can't you make a decision yesterday? Because I want to get cracking and, and close a deal and get get building. But, you know, like there's all kinds of things, not just on the sales front, but there's a multitude of challenges that really do, um, you know, uh, make life difficult for us as business leaders. And I think this is why, you know, there is so much um, importance that there is an element of toughness in us as operators uh, and not really in a macho, I'm tough, but there is that level of resilience um, and stickability and durability as part of us as individual individuals that will grow over time. But as long as we are constantly going back to the gym and pushing the weight, 
Um, and then, of course, you know, as far as togetherness goes, I think, you know, it's just, it, it's, you know, what they say, it's, you can go, oh, geez, I'm going to butcher this completely. But, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. I think that's the African proverb. So, you know, today is about for us as individuals to be uh, very resilient and, and have a very, you know, uh, very high level mental toughness uh, and personal uh, toughness and resilience. But at the same time, understanding the power of understanding the power of uh, togetherness and that together we can go far. Right, because what we're talking about is the strength of unity. Um, you know, I think it's more enjoyable a lot of the time. And I don't mind if you, you know, I think we don't want to get uh, too off track and think, right, this is, team means all of the people that are on my payroll. Well, that that isn't necessarily correct. I mean, yeah, you can be talking people on payroll, of course, but you can also be talking about people, business partners like I have. Um, and of course, your subcontractors and suppliers are also part of your network then really there's I you know there's 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 a uh, satisfaction that comes from you know being together and going forward in the same direction for instance you know we were out last week working with clients and uh, we were in our uh, the, the home the home hardware uh, design center they've got here just about 15 minutes north and it was a great time where I was working with the designers so there was a lady doing you know floor coverings and there was a lady doing kitchens and there was a, a guy doing plumbing uh, supplies and things like that. So, you know, it was really, uh, it was good to be able to sort of be there to serve the client and for us uh, as builders, as well as combining our forces with the designers, going in the same direction. So, you know, I think that, that, that togetherness, the power of a unified team, um, you know, the strength in unity comes uh, by working together towards the same, same goal. It really means that there's an understanding that every member of your team plays a critical role uh, in the success of the business, and it's ironic because I think earlier this week we uh, we uh, I went and did a, a meeting, a site visit with my business partner, and then then I put together a site visit report and uh, decided that I wanted to present that in person. And it was nice because when we rocked up there, it's a house that overlooks the lake, and of course there's a gazebo there, and we sat down and you know they had salsa and corn chips and you know guacamole and iced tea, and it was quite it was quite a nice meeting. We made a bit of an impression, obviously. And, you know, my business partner, he sort of said to me, well, why is it that we're doing a second meeting? Fast forward, we got in the truck and I said, how did you feel about the second meeting? He said it was fantastic. It was great. And, you know, what I really enjoyed and, and not, I have not, I don't think I can remember the last time I did a meeting where I was with uh, a client, sorry, I was with a client, but I was also with a business partner in the presentation mode. And, you know, what I had to outline to Jed was that, Mate, your interaction as the builder, because I technically am the sales guy, your interaction with the builder was 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 so important, and it was on another level to me being the primary, you know, uh, sales guy. But to have a construction operative there to speak to the various aspects, it really did. There was togetherness there, like we were adding value to the client, and you know, we'll it'll be, you know that was for a rather large deck renovation, and we're going to create cantilevers and you know build new roofs over and redo the you know, the deck surface, but, um, you know, time will tell to see whether or not we can close that deal. But so far it feels really good and the clients are very, you know, good. So there is, you know, that's a very unique situation as well because most of our competitors in this area wouldn't go out with two heads of state, if you like. They would go at individuals. So, you know, the power of that unified team really does demonstrate a level of unity um, and expertise. And I say that between myself and Jed, there's over 60 years worth of construction experience. And so there's, it's not just like, well, we'll make double the money. I think we'll make exponentially more money because of that leverageability um, in that, in that, uh, you know, that unit between myself and my business partner. So, you know, I think with that, uh, what, what I see working because of that togetherness is, is there's got to be a high level of trust. So, Currently, Jed trusts me to do everything in the way of, you know, the sales side of things. I am probably carrying the lion's share of the estimation at the moment as well. I'll do the contract administration. Of course, I'm working on the closes of these deals as well. But then, of course, the flip side is once we go to construction, I trust Jed to basically build that thing as I promised the client. So, you know, building the trust between team, that takes time. That's not something that you're going to do in five minutes. Um, but if we can communicate better, we solve problems faster and we work more efficiently. And that really does uh, improve or increase your profitability. There's no question about it. So some practical steps to sort of help 
um, you know, develop that unity um, as it relates to togetherness in your team, you know, whether it's, you know, in-house or, or whether it was outside your payroll, you know, foster open communication between all levels, you know, of the organisation. Um, you know, you want to create a culture where everyone feels valued and heard. Um, I think that, you know, the fact that, we're dealing with the organic creatures is what I'm talking about. I'm not saying, hey, you've got to feel together with your skill saw or your trailer. Like we're talking about building that team. You know, I think there's got to be um, that that element where everyone feels like they are contributing and that they are being heard. It's really important. How do you like it if you're not, you don't feel like you play an important role or how do you feel it if you, if you don't feel like you're being heard? It's offensive. And so just keep that in mind. And I think as leadership within our business – this month, as much as I let out by saying that it's all about mindset, I think this is really personal leadership, I think, more than anything. So, um, yeah, and then regularly bring your team together. Like, you know, you've got to be sharing what your goals are, um, you know, some of the challenges, and then, of course, celebrate the successes as well. It's super important. You know, I feel like that that's what, when I'm, when I'm working with builders and general contractors, you know, at our weekly meetings, you know, I, I start out by talking about, hey, what... What, what's the highlight reel look like? Give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's really important that we, we air those because, you know, as a counterpuncher, as a coach, you know, I want to look, look in the eyes of, you know, my clients and understand that, you know, where they're winning and where they feel there's a high level of confidence and then maybe where there's areas that are a little bit of a, a, a bit of a, you know, a hamstring problem, you know, where there's something that is hamstringing their momentum, whether it's a, a mental block or whether or not it's just something that's practical, like, hey, I'm tired of doing estimates on spreadsheets. What do you think I should do? You know, that sort of thing. So, you know, I think when we're bring, bringing our team together and, and so, you know, when I go and talk to the designers out at Home Hardware, you know, I, I make it clear for, to them that I want the clients to enjoy the sales process and the selection process as much as they may end up enjoying the construction process. So I've got to communicate, you know, and of course, you know, post that meeting, there was emails that come to me and I was very, um, you know, open in, in, in appreciation for, you know, what those three team members did. Um, and, you know, we just keep, you know, moving forward, but we, we want to make sure that we do provide good feedback at the highest level as well. Okay, so that was talking about togetherness. So we're talking about togetherness and toughness. So point number two, toughness, resilience in the face of adversity. You know, we, we, you know, I think we, uh, in episode 200 there, we talked about, you know, resilience and, and how obviously it plays a massive role. I think it was our first point for Navy SEALs. And I think that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good one to revisit here real quick as it relates to toughness. But, you know, the reality of the battle, I mean, it's, it's a constant grind to, you know, deal with project deadlines, to deal with you know, bottom line and budgets within those projects to deal with clients being clients um, as much as we love them. You know, there's a lot of unexpected interruptions that, that happen on projects and we, we have to cater for the the inquisitive nature of clients and sometimes the pedantic nature of some clients. And so, you know, really that's like, I just wish they would go to Mexico for four months while we do their project. Um, you know, and in some cases, you've got homeowners that actually live on site while you're doing the work. And that, that I think is probably one of the greatest challenges for us as builders. Um, so that's really, you know, and, and really when things don't go as planned and, you know, obviously we're, we're trying to push through these challenges, you feel like giving up and sometimes you just feel like going, I might as well go back and be a carpentry contractor. But nonetheless, you know, we want to try and develop, you know, that, that resilience, okay, and overcome the challenges. I mean, ultimately... You know, I think as much as we we don't like those interferences, I think when we are able to to step up and overcome those, where we negotiate down some of the things that, that have happened within the business, and then we can basically tick that box and say, right, we dealt with that, it's done. You know, I think that having overcome those hurdles, it does, what it does is it demonstrates your capacity and it also demonstrates your ability to lead. And so any of these unforeseen conditions and you know, delays and shortages and shortfalls and things like that, you know, uh, we really, we really have, we don't have the option to back down and just let these and be bulldozed by these certain things. So um, we've got to find those solutions and make the adjustments so we can keep moving forward. So it's the ability to face adver adversity head on. 
um, and really come out stronger on the other side. And you, you would have heard me say, no doubt, or you, maybe you haven't, but, you know, resistance builds muscle mass. So, you know, I think the, the, the higher the levels, the bigger the devils. And we really got to understand that we all say we want to build a business and we want to go and, you know, have a million dollars in revenue or $2 million in revenue. What we don't understand is that we're not the human being today that we need to be going forward. And it is, you know, to manage that business in the future. And it is those struggles and those inconveniences and those disruptions and all of those unexpected challenges that actually is what is forming you and developing you and helping you to grow uh, into that human that will be able to carry more weight. I mean, it's easy. I sit here as a 51-year-old and I think back, you know, being a 21-year-old and there's no doubt that my capacity as a business leader, let's just talk business, but my capacity as a business leader is far, you know, is so much greater than my my capacity as a business leader as a 21-year-old. That's what I'm talking. Now, there's 30 years difference in there. That's That obviously is a bit of a hint as to how some things happen, although people can keep going around the mountain and they don't continue to grow. They just keep doing time. And unfortunately, there is no development because they always shy away from the challenge of development and growth. Um, and so we need to make sure that we are embracing the challenge. So some practical steps, you know, we've talked about the reality of the battle when it comes to toughness and what we've got to do, overcoming the challenges which play a big role. But some practical steps, we've just got to develop contingency plans, you know, for potential challenges before they arise. You know, I think I'm going to talk about, you know, reactivity and how we react to certain things instead of responding. Respond means we're calculated in how we do, um, you know, handle that situation being reactive is really just a, a you know a, a, a detonation of emotion, and and all of a sudden we're just reacting and we've got no there's no pre calculation, um, and so you know I think those those abilities it's no different for me doing estimates on on fixed price you know I've got to ensure that I've got contingencies and cushions and you know semi plan B's built in there to ensure that in the event of an overrun that we're covered. And I think, you know, for us, and that's why, you know, in, in a strategic planning um, side of things, you know, we talk about, you know, drilling down on this, doing the SWOT analysis. So we're looking at our strengths and our weaknesses and our opportunities and our threats. And that really, everything that we're doing is to try to see round corners. And, you know, when we're looking at our activity key metrics and the activity within the business, it tells us a story. But, you know, we've, we've constantly monitoring that because we're always got a very mild level of, uh, mild level of paranoia and we we really want to make sure that we've got our head on straight, and we are we're going. Hey, everything's looking good at the moment. However, this or this could happen because we don't have control over that or that. You know, and I think that's a maturity and leadership where that analysis and that assessment comes from. And then it, it kind of goes. You know, you go into that mode where you go. Well, it's better to have it and not need it than need it than need it and not have it. Right. Um, so the next thing here is, you know, obviously we segue straight into leadership. So you've, you've heard me say before, leaders lead. Coach Mack is a big, uh, you know, a big advocate of that. You know, we're, we're going to set the pace. Um, you know, I think for me as a, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what classifies as a natural leader, but, you know, I think when we talk about leaders leading, you know, for, for me, there is an element of get out the way, I'll do it myself. And that I've got to work on because I tend to sort of go and, take the bull by the horns in a split second notice. I'm like, I can do that. Um, but I, I think, which is a good quality, I think, but you've got to draw the line because obviously you can't continue to build a business to a, a high level and do everything yourself. Um, and so, you know, uh, we, but we do have to lead, um, you know, you know, we've got to be, be active in that demonstration role. Um, you know, obviously your team is going to understand, um, you know, that the, the, your behaviour sets the tone so you know if you're loosey-goosey as a leader and you're non-committal and you're really not passionate about what you do well guess what your team is going to do the same thing as well so you need to be passionate hard-working dedicated and I think the team will do one or two things your team will either follow suit right and if they can't handle the heat they will exit stage right they'll be like I'm done with this I can't do this um, you know because I think for me as a leader, sometimes my intensity and my passion and my commitment and my work ethic, it's not everyone's cup of tea. And so, you know, the demand that I place on myself first and foremost, the expectation I have around production and execution. 
sometimes, you know, even people that come in, you know, and, and want to work with me as a business coach, it's, you know, sometimes they look at it and go, oh, mate, I've just, that's, no, I can't do that long term. Not yet. You know, it's just too overwhelming for me at the moment. It's too demanding. My bandwidth is not going to carry that. And so, you know, think about that. Maybe if you want to, you know, pop in and, and uh, have a chat with me on video about the state of the union as it relates to you and your business, that the demand, you know, that I'm going to place on you to improve, now not a lot, but I always am, always am calling up. You know, I always want you to improve. You must climb. You've got to do the time. You've got to get up there and get the altitude. And that is through the effort of what you do. I'm busy developing and growing as a leader myself. So I'm placing demands on my own personal growth. And then all I do is I turn around and I make that suggestion and go, well, if you, you know, if you, if you want to reach the top of the mountain, you've got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. So, um, and just a side note for guys and gals, you know, it's not how quickly that you reach the summit, okay? Because when you get there, the view is the same, no matter how fast or how slow you did it. So just keep, you know, that in mind as you're progressing that, you know, you run your own race, you know. I thought I would have achieved more, you know, in my business life thus far, um, but it just wasn't to be, you know. There was a slight interruption where we decided to move around the world. You know, that's going to gut your cash flow and your momentum. Um, I know that for a fact, but it's just the way that the ball bounced. So you've got to be patient with yourself, you know. You, you do have to just cut yourself some slack sometimes, and I am the worst at doing that. So I am just trying to take my own advice at the same time. So you really want to set the pace. You want to be organized, efficient. You always want to be moving forward. Um, you want your team to rise to the challenge as well. That's kind of a qualifier. You know, if they're not going to respond at an adequate level, then you've got to start asking yourself the question, are they the right person? Remember, it's about getting the right people on the bus, sitting in the right seats, behaving the right way. Um, it's super important. But if you're inconsistent and hesitant, the whole operation will slow down. Um, you know, so your leadership capability determines the success, you know, of your projects and the growth of your business. So a couple of practical things for you. Um, obviously, be visible and be accessible to your team. You know, um, you, you know the, the, the leading them, you, you can't push a rope. Folks, if you're a leader in the business, you're out front, you can pull your team with you on that rope. You cannot stand behind your team and push a rope. It does not work. Okay, so you want to make sure you're visible and you're accessible to your team. Um, you want to communicate the vision of the business clearly so that everyone in, uh, understands their role in the development of and achieving the goals in the business. And of course, we want to set high standards and we also want to hold ourselves accountable to them just as you would your team. Right, point number four, success. The success as a result you know, of togetherness, toughness and leadership. So it's not an accident. I think that, you know, it's funny because, you know, as as we've seen certain business leaders that maybe have come out of obscurity and into success and it's almost like, oh, you know, I know, I remember Gary Vaynerchuk talking about the fact that, you know, he's this overnight success business and yet he's been working in his father's liquor store since he was 16. So he's kind of an overnight success 15 years in the making, um, you know, and I think we need to hold fast to that because I think there's, there's some of you guys and gals that are, exactly the same as that you're working your ass off and then all of a sudden you'll hit a pot of gold and people go oh you're lucky and it's like they haven't seen the work the profuse amount of consistency and work that goes in seven days a week to make that happen so just be aware that you know that that it isn't an accident and it's really just a culmination of all of your deliberate action over a period of time um, so you know it's it's really about those the right people in your business so building a strong united front um, and leading the team with toughness and with vision. So the other important thing is, like I just alluded to, it's about keeping focus on the long game. Um, you know, it doesn't come overnight, um, but it's all part of the journey. And so um, really you want to double down and and really get a lot of clarity around what your strengths and your weaknesses are as a leader. And really you want to step up and start filling some of those, you know, the gaps um, that are in your business and you have an individual style I have an individual style I mean there's a whole bunch of other guys that do construction podcasts you'll listen to me because maybe you like the way I roll um, it's very individual and you know your your leadership style there's definitely going to be some good points and there's going to be some not so good points so you know those things you need to pat yourself on the back for the things you're doing well and you really need to um, you know observe some of those gaps and deficiencies in your leadership style and you need to address those and figure out how you uh, how you can maybe improve those because essentially your leadership 
capability is going to determine how far you go. So again, the speed of the leader determines the speed of the pack. Um, you know, really, if your leadership is is, is governed or is it, if it's regulated, then the success in your business life will also be regulated. So togetherness, toughness, and leadership, um, these are the cornerstones of success in our industry. If you want to win the battle that is business development, um, you're going to have to lead your team, you're going to have to push through adversity and never lose sight of the power of working together. If you want to chat with me about some coaching, get across to EliteBusinessAdvisory.com, hit the book a consultation button, and I would love to spend 30 minutes with you just burying you in, in, in quality information as it relates specifically to your business and uh, really send you away with some stuff that can um, improve the way that you view your business. And then possibly uh, maybe you and I can spend some time talking about how we can work together and how you can have me in your corner helping to put that together. Don't forget, get across to Business for Builders VIP. Answer the questions. If you're a good sort, I'll let you in. Get into that community. Ask questions. Start really um, being vocal about, you know, because I guarantee if you've got a question, there's about 10 other people in that group that are going to have a similar interest in your question and certainly the answers that that come about as well. Like and subscribe. One of these drops every week. Great to have you along for the ride. Uh, Go build a kick-ass business. See you in the next episode. Cheers.